back. I'm Nuala Black and of course this is Foxy at 50. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today I have an exercise for you with a difference. For those who know me, you'll be very well aware that I was a professional belly dancer in a previous life, dancing all over the Middle East. And then I taught belly dancing for many years. And while some of my students um, came to me because they wanted to be professional belly dancers as well, the vast majority of students took up belly dancing as just a fabulous, fun way to keep fit and, of course, sculpt the famous hourglass figure. Um, belly dancing is renowned for its health benefits and when done, done correctly, it turns shapes and contours for the ultimate feminine figure. Now, I'll show you what I mean by that. At the heart of belly dancing, we have something called isolation. That's what makes it unique, unlike any other dance form. So, if I just quickly show you, um, again, a very famous move, the figure of eight. Um, when it's done with isolation, it looks something like this. Uh, it's a horizontal figure of eight, which I, this is going to be the move, and I'm going to break it down for you. Now, when it's done without isolation, it looks like this. So can you see the difference, how you can sculpt uh, and tone the core by using isolation? And then when it's done like this, I'm doing the same thing with my hips. It's more like typical Western dancing, i.e. absolutely no control whatsoever. So by learning to isolate, you naturally sculpt and contour the body into the shape that we all want, ultimately the hourglass figure. Now I'm six foot, well nearly six foot, so um, for me getting the hourglass figure is extremely difficult. And also um, what you might not be aware of is how or why some women have natural waists that just seem to nip right in, whereas others, particularly me, tend to be very square. Um, I was a lot more, I mean, I was totally square before I started belly dancing. And the reason for that is because if you're the lucky, feel your last uh, rib bone and then the top of your hip, if that gap is very small, it's very difficult to have a waistline, to have your waist really go in. If you are lucky enough to have a large gap, your waist will naturally just drop in. So um, probably why one very famous celebrity that we know, we all know about mentioning no names, had the uh, bottom rib removed um, so that the waist would go in more. Now, but what I noticed then when I did start belly dancing was that even though I was completely straight all the way down, um, because of the way I was tensing and using the muscles on my core, my waistline started to go in a great deal more. So whether or not it's your goal to lose weight, toning up will still dramatically improve the way your body looks, even if you don't lose any weight or that's not your goal. And belly dancing is one of the best ways I know to do it. Toning up is everything, and I believe that, well, at the age I am, 57, I've managed to help keep my body toned um, due to my belly dancing ways. I have absolutely no doubt about that whatsoever. And let's not forget that any type of dancing has been proven to help prevent dementia, improve mood, and so help prevent depression. It lowers stress and anxiety, improves bone health, and reduces the risk of osteoporosis. And those are just to name a few of the benefits of dancing. I can't overstate the benefits of dancing in general. 
So let's get on with it. So today it's just a very simple move. It's that figure of eight that I've already shown you, but I'm going to break it down. And I'm going to show you how to do it in a few different ways because everybody's brain computes it differently. You might want to imagine an eight there. I've just drawn an eight in the air. And then you've taken the top and the bottom, you've laid it, you've laid it flat on the floor and then you're going to trace your hips around it. So it's a horizontal, flat figure of eight, lying sideways like that. Okay, so I'm flexing the knees, tummy in, but breathe normally, of course. And what you're going to do is just twist so that your right hip is pointing out to sort of roughly one or two o'clock but you want to keep your um, upper half facing as much as you can, facing the front. And then you're going to push your right hip towards, say approximately one, two o'clock, then swing back to approximately five or six o'clock, and then the left hip will naturally swing forward. So the direction that it's facing, push it in that direction and swing it round to the back which will automatically move the right hip and now you're moving your hips in a figure of eight so tummy in rib cage up and try to not move the rest of your body now that doesn't mean I can't, you know, if I wanted to dance, use my hands. What it means is, is that you're learning control and you can move your hips without your shoulders, your rib cage, everything else going with it. Let's go again, tummy in, rib cage up, twist and out to the right. You can see how it's working when you isolate. You can see how nothing happens when you don't isolate. And if you're really confused because I'm facing you, I'm going to turn my back and then you can copy me exactly. Whether you do belly dancing or not, just learning some control, of course, is going to tone you up but it's also going to improve any type of dancing you do because you've got control and your body isn't just going all over the place. So let me just turn around. So you can follow me exactly now. Tummy in, rib cage up, and we're going to twist and then push the hip out to the right and around. Don't take any notice of my arms. <laughs> Years of belly dancing, they just shoot up. And we're keeping the hips flat. And I'll just go over the clock again. So twist your hip, your right hip, so that it's about two o'clock and push it out to two o'clock. Keeping the chest forward. Swing your right hip back so that your left hip is approximately at 10, 11 o'clock and then push it out and round to about 7 or 8 o'clock. And the right hip pushes round to about 4, 5 o'clock. And then just keep moving the knees are flexed. You can't have straight locked knees because that will just lock your hips. And that's our figure of eight. Okay, just once again at the front. Now, my hips are, of course, obviously well used to doing this, but they certainly weren't able to do that when I first started. 
So you might be tempted to let your whole body move and then your hips will move further. That is absolutely the wrong way to do it. You will never achieve isolation. You will never achieve the uh, muscle memory that we want on our core. So what you have to do is remember that when you push out, as soon as the top half of your body wants to go with it, you just, that's as far as you can go and you swing back. So even if you're doing the tiniest, tiniest figure of eight, it still looks 10 times better. You're still working those muscles, but you're doing it correctly. And then what will happen is that your hips will become much more flexible and then you'll be able to move further with time. But if you cheat and do that, nothing's happening. So just allow your hips, like everything you have to learn, the more you do it, the better you get at it, and the more stretching. And this is, um, you know, if you have any hip problems, stiff hips, um, then this is great for releasing your hips. And that will then help you with walking better. Um, if you're all stiff, this, I mean, I just never had any stiffness when I was belly dancing. But because I hardly do it now, I have a lot more stiffness. So let me know what you think of that, uh, because I would love to regularly put up videos of different moves. Uh, if you want them, I'll make them, so you just have to let me know. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe, leave a comment, and if you have any questions, then just put them in the comments box, and I will get back to you. So until the next time, I'm Nuna Black, this is Foxy at 50. Stay safe, happy, healthy, and well. Bye-bye.